Hello, uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us for the artist talk for Chronicle Stories and Symbols of Culture and Connection, featuring the amazing artwork of, excuse me, James Graining, Nazim Modamedi, and Saida Zamorodi. Uh, it's a fantastic exhibit with some really talented artists, and you're going to get a chance to hear from all of them tonight and catch a sneak peek of some of their beautiful artwork, which is up at the K Meek Arts Center right now. Uh, my name is Stephen Snyder. I am the Gallery and Communications Coordinator for the West Vancouver Community Arts Council. And uh, we are so thrilled to partner with the K Meek to present this uh, stunning uh, exhibition. Uh, and we are coming to you uh, from uh, West Vancouver, where the K Meek is, at uh, 1700 Mathers Avenue. Uh, it's, a, it's a little ways up the hill, um, but we're coming to you from West Vancouver, which is on the unceded and traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples. Uh, here on the North Shore, that means the Squamish Nation, the Soyotus Nation, and the Musqueam Nation. And the Arts Council is incredibly grateful to be able to gather on these lands for arts and culture activities and are incredibly grateful to our host nations, neighbors, community members for their stewardship of these lands since time immemorial. So uh, Chronicle, Stories and Symbols of Culture and Connection, uh, as we said, is on up at the k until May 21st of 2023. There's a uh, 20, yeah, 2023, that's the year it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, time, what does it mean now? Uh, so uh, these artists all have, uh, paintings, some mixed media work that are all telling uh, stories of some kind or using iconography and symbols uh, related to uh, the heritages that they come from. And sharing these stories uh, is a really important, uh, important to, to these artists to do. And we're going to hear all about why and how the stories are telling and how they're telling them uh, coming up. But if you have any questions or comments for our three talented artists, you can drop those in the chat and we will get to them a little bit later in the evening. So uh, let's start off by meeting our fantastic artists. Uh, they're all gonna tell you a little bit about themselves and their background. Um, let's start off with Saida. Saida, please introduce yourself. Um, I am uh, Saida, I'm born from Iran. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Steve, Steven and all the team and Kimik Gallery for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I have been painting for many years and have exhibited in others' country, but this exhibition is special to me because it's based on a subject that's been a long-term wish of mine. I am thrilled to have finally achieved something that's so dear to my heart, uh, related to my uh, passion for Iranian culture. Um, I choose uh, this idea, uh, the poet, because I have a great interest in poetry uh, and it has always had a special place for me, especially Iranian, Iranian poets who poems have been written more than 600 years ago, um, or some of them have been written a thousand years ago, but their poems are still alive and dynamic. I always thought that someday, one day, I, I should pay tribute to these great poets and painting was uh, the only way for me to do it. Hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Saida, for introducing yourself and telling us uh, a little bit about why uh, why you're painting what you're painting. Uh, I can't wait to uh, share uh, some samples of your work with everyone. Uh, Nassim, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Thank you, Stephen. Uh, my name is Nassim Motamedi. I was born in Iran. Uh, I was 11 years old when my parents decided to send my sister, older sister to England for studying. So me and my mom accompanied her and we stayed there for two years. So I was enrolled in one of the schools uh, in Manchester, England. And uh, uh, my English wasn't very good. I couldn't communicate very well with other students. Um, 
but I was introduced to art instead. The art class in, uh, in that school was pretty much advanced. And I even remember the name of the teacher, Mr. Gibbons, uh, who taught me a lot. I was exposed to art. I learned lots of techniques and we drew, we painted with different materials. We even became creative. Uh, after that time, when we got back to Iran, I never left that passion for art. Uh, I decided to enroll myself for uh, University of Fine Arts. After finishing my bachelor degree, I went for master degree. And uh, I, at the same time, I was a teacher in a private school in Tehran, art teacher in a private school in Tehran. And I was running my own studio and having my own uh, students. Um, and, uh, you know, also participating in different exhibitions. Then it was 1998 when we decided, me and my husband, to move to Canada. Uh, you know, adjusting to the new life in Canada was uh, very challenging at the beginning, you know, um, for such a long time, I just sharpened my survival skills and, uh, you know, tried to just adjust to the new situation, to the new life, learning the culture, learning the language. And uh, all these times, uh, you know, although I was for some time disconnected to art, but uh, it was something that I was carrying it in my heart. And uh, I always did painting at home for myself, even, even if, I not, if I wasn't sharing it in an exhibition with other people. Uh, so uh, from that time on, art is always with me, is important part of my life. Thank you uh, so much for sharing, Nassim love hearing everyone's stories and how they've all come to art. Uh, up next, James, please introduce yourself. Hi, so I guess, um, well, my name is James Greening. I used to kind of introduce myself as just some guy from uh, the 60 Scoop era. Now, I didn't always know that I came from a 60 Scoop era. I grew up as a, as a native looking kid in a white environment. So things were, were tough, definitely growing up as a kid. I didn't have any training in the arts. I didn't even know that I could draw until just a, a little while ago. And uh, a lot of that was because I was just trying to find my way back to cultural understanding. The 60 Scoop uh, is from, or revolves around the loss of culture, language, and identity. So art is my avenue back to trying to find out who I am as as a, a native person um it's it's a journey from scratch because really i didn't know much of anything I, I certainly didn't qualify um in the minds of people of other natives as being native and i certainly didn't qualify as being a white person in the white society so i was kind of like on the perimeter uh, for a, a good portion of my life i guess uh I started the art um, journey after I learned a bit about what the 60 Scoop was. Um, I didn't know that I could draw or paint or anything like that. But during the pandemic, uh, there was, you know, not a lot to do. You're staying inside. And uh, I started drawing. I, um, it was a hummingbird. I bought a print at an auction. Um, it was a, a Haida style uh, hummingbird and I was just copying that and I don't know why I started but I did and uh, when I was done I was going hey man that looks <laughs> that looks pretty good it looks really close to the the hummingbird that I was copying and I was going I, I don't know where that came from I, I've never been able to do that before well I, I did it a few more times and I thought well this is pretty good I kind of like what's happening here and I thought, well, I should probably be learning my cultural um, art. And I come from, and then I started introducing myself as, as an artist called uh, Blue Sky, because that's my actual native given name. Uh, Blue Sky, I come from Kakawishtahau, 
That's a Cree nation in Saskatchewan. And um, I found some art that came from that area or a little bit further east, actually. It was uh, Norval Morisot that uh, was very popular and, and I found it online and I had a connection with it right away. And I started looking around and I figured this is what I want to pursue. And I found out, yes, I, this is, is my lane. I'm allowed to pursue it. I wouldn't be uh, culturally uh, stealing from anybody because these are, these are my people, Anishinaabe. Um, and uh, I've been very encouraged uh, in the trip. So what you'll see tonight on the walls are, are part of that journey. It hasn't been very long, um, but um, hopefully, you know, I, I can keep going and, and make a, a bit of a dent in uh, the woodland style uh, out here on the West Coast. Um, if I may, I would like to also uh, add a little bit about the inspiration of my artworks, which I forgot to add when I was introducing myself. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, my inspiration came from the Persian tiles. And um, for some time, I was just stud studying the tiles with their patterns and their colors and, you know, the bright colors and I was amazed with how uh, beautiful they are, how modern they are uh, from those days, long, long time ago. And <clears throat> I was just uh, studying them and I was thinking, how can I bring those tiles to today's world and today's art and make a bridge or somehow connect these two worlds together? And uh, when I was looking at those tiles, I was finding them quite abstract in terms of the, the colors, in terms of the lines and, you know, the shapes. So uh, I, you can see those blue colors, vibrant blue colors, purples, uh, cobalt blue, azure blue in my works with the golden yellows, which is inspired by those tiles. And uh, when I was working on those uh, uh, tiles and, you know, bringing those colors on to my canvas, uh, this uh, movement in Iran happened, the movement of women life freedom, uh, which is more than six months now that is ongoing. And uh, as I believe that us, all of us, we are a reflection of the world around us, uh, I couldn't just, you know, I at that time, I thought I, I have to do something. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to create some piece that is reflecting the situation now, what is going on in Iran right now, what these women are dealing with. So the last uh, five works are more connected to this movement, but still you will find my footsteps in these works as well. You will find those colors uh, again in these uh, works as well. So I just wanted to add this part. Well, uh, thank you, James, and thank you, Nazim, for sharing your journeys and inspiration. Thank you, Seda, as well. It's really great to hear what you all say because there are some great uh, common threads happening uh, about just this, this need uh, to get whatever you have to say and whatever you feel out and, and this journey of connection uh, to things that you did or didn't grow up with but are part of your heritage. Um, that's, that's one of the wonderful things about being able to share artwork like this is bringing those different kinds of stories together and seeing how, oh, these three people are kind of coming from a, a similar place in some regards. Um, so now we are going to take a, a quick little tour of the exhibit so uh, everyone watching can uh, see what it looks like. Um, but it's just a little bit of a teaser um, because you really have to come in person and, and see everything because it's, mm -hmm. it's really just stunning. So I'm just going to pull that up for y'all right now. So uh, as you come in, 
uh, on the K-Meek um, on the ground level, the Grosvenor Theater. That was kind of the an overview of that first floor. There's X, there's artwork on both floors for both theaters. Um, so we start off here at the atrium. We've got uh, some work uh, by James up first. Which is, uh, it's great to get uh, those bold colors uh, right in your eyeballs when you first walk in. Yeah, and it's a uh, yeah. As you can see, there's uh, there's two drums uh, that you've painted, James, along with all of the canvases. Which is thank you so much for including those. Yeah. And there's uh, there's a lot of large pieces in this exhibit too. <laughs> On this floor, we move from James. We have some of uh, some pieces from Nassim. Some really great sort of abstracted mixed media works. as we get through this first sort of sampling uh, of all the artwork. You can even tell right now, um, between looking at James and Nassim, and next we're gonna see some side note from some of your work, um, how different you all are uh, in your approaches, uh, your style, uh, the types of stories or motifs or, or symbols you're trying to tell, but there is definitely a strong, uh, there's a strength here. There's definitely a message coming through in all of your work. Yeah, so now we've got some beautiful pieces here from Saida up next. Absolutely stunning pieces, everyone. Um, and now we move on down to the McEwen Theater Lobby, um, where there's even more artwork. <laughs> there's so many uh, pieces to feast your eyes upon. <laughs> And as we were just saying how uh, you all have such sort of different distinct styles, um, even within some of the bodies of work themselves, like Nassim, you've got uh, a wide range of, uh, of visual cues and motifs and, and, and storytellings and even media happening. That's, that's pretty great to see the variety. Yeah. These two that you are just showing right now are part of the, uh, the woman life freedom movement with those three upstairs that we just saw. So yeah. these two, the blue rainbow and the one beside belong to those three. And the rest you are seeing are part of the uh, Persian tiles. The inspiration of the Persian tiles. Yeah. Now it's, it's interesting how you've you know, taken you know, sort of the core image, but then sort of abstracted and, and added and yeah. subtracted around them. As I mentioned, I was trying to make a bridge from the past to today's, you know, present. Yeah. Uh, this, this idea of, of a bridge, I think, is, is a pretty common theme we're going to hear this evening. Yeah. 
such such great textures. Yeah, and then we move into more of uh, more of Saida's work. Again, it's it's so so massive, so large. It's really also very impactful. They're almost like portals you can step into into a into a whole other world. When we took this video, we didn't have them up yet. Um, but Saida, with each of your pieces, you've included a, a, a little bit of a write-up about um, each poet um, that has inspired each piece. And I thought that was really a really wonderful touch to, to share that information with viewers. Oh, just lovely. And then we move into more of James, more of your fantastic artwork. There's such such character uh, to all of the well, all of the characters uh, in your pieces, all, all the figures and the animals, they all have such such distinct personalities. Yeah, there's a there's a lot to uh, there's a lot to take in in this exhibit, you know. Um, so many different uh, patterns or shapes or colors or motifs or textures or figures and movements. Um, there's really a lot to really in all of your artwork to sink your teeth into and try and figure out what's going on or figure out what what the story is. Part of uh, part of the woodland style, James. But I have to say, your your color choices are also really great. Really, I always really say, bold. I always say, I didn't uh, I didn't make the colors, but I chose them. Uh, that's about <laughs> as far as I can take credit. <laughs> yeah. No, and every everyone's colors are are fantastic. Whether something is. Uh, in some of side of some of your pieces, they're they're a bit more muted, but there's always some kind of really brilliant light happening, you know. And and with Nassim, you've got all of these really everything's really rich and 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 feels really uh, uh, ancient almost, just because you've used these colors that are so uh, you've you've seen them in, in so many different types of paintings or mosaics or or motifs already everything there's a real history to the types of colors you've chosen i think you've all your your color choices all of you have uh, i think are definitely part of the stories you're trying to tell it really yes, says a lot mm -hmm. definitely yeah so now that uh, we've seen uh, sort of the exhibition as a whole and had a quick look at some of the pieces and heard from our talented artists uh, giving you a bit of their background. Uh, each of them has chosen uh, a work that's on display to go uh, a little bit more in depth about um, so we can get a, a bit of a, a, a more uh, stronger grasp of the body of work that they have on display. 
Uh, so let's start, uh, Saida, let's start with you. I'm going to pull up this uh, beautiful uh, piece of yours and, uh, and then you can uh, tell us all about it. Sorry, sorry about that. That was the wrong painting. We'll just uh, <laughs> pull that back up in just a second. Sorry about that, everybody. There we go. <clears throat> Great, yes, please, Saida, please uh, tell us about this fantastic work of art. Okay. Um... As someone who loves both uh, art and literature, I wanted to find a way to combine these two passions. Painting seems like a perfect medium to pay tribute to the great Iranian poets and uh, their timeless books. I hope that my painting will help introduce their poetry to a new audience and keep their legacy alive for generation to come. Um, Saadi, one of the most uh, greatest and uh, important Iranian poets has a remarkable poem called Bani Adam, which is a comprehensive and complete poem for all generation and races throughout the world from the past to the present and from the present to the future. And uh, I find myself compelled to study Iranian poets more deeply to better grasp their ideas and gain to reach richer understanding. And what you are seeing now uh, are some of my reflection on their words. Um, um, Sadi talks about the equality of all humans in his works. So I try to show people in my painting as equal and none of them is superior of others. Mm, this idea comes from Sadi's words. I express uh, the feeling of uh, connection and uh, companionship between different races in the painting. They can be together and this bond and quality can be beautiful. Uh, he used to teach a class and uh, people share their problems with him. Therefore, if you see uh, a, spiritual, uh, a spiritual state in the painting and the influence of the prayer, it is uh, directly from his uh, personality and works. And works, sorry. And uh, humans have together in the sky, uh, which uh, is uh, common to all of us. Uh, then uh, I have chosen the classical style because it gives me a better and more valuable historical sense. That's all. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing um, and sharing uh, not only why you painted it, but sharing a little bit more about, about Sadi, about this, this poet, which uh, I'm definitely going to go look up. I um, really appreciate that uh, your, your desire to show connection and companionship amongst uh, people. Uh, that's, a, that's a really beautiful and pretty common sense idea, um, but sometimes it needs to be stated. Um, and I think you've done that wonderfully in this piece. I think it's great. I like it a lot. Yeah. It's beautiful, yes. Yeah. And uh, have you always um, painted in such a, such a realistic style? Uh, no, I um, work a different style. Um, I am uh, working the classical and the uh, 
um, uh, different uh, style, yes. Um, and, um, but for poems, uh, the subject of poems, I, um, uh, I think uh, I thought it's better to work a realistic into uh, this kind of the painting. It is uh, very, uh, I think it is very better to show my feeling about the, what they did. Yeah, that was wonderful. So for, for this piece, was there um, a, a specific poem that you were inspired by or was it more just sort of uh, this poet's body of work and, uh, no, and a general message? A specific uh, uh, poem um, uh, about the Bani Adam. Uh, it's a um, um, saddest poem uh, can way that we live on a beautiful plan planet where we are all connected to each other, uh, irrespective of our race, color, or religion. Therefore, it is our uh, responsibility to ensure that no human being feel, feels disconnected or isolated from others. Um, this poem has beautifully compared the, uh, this uh, connection uh, to that of a family where each member is like a part of the body. If one part of the body is a pain, all other parts will also feel pain. Similarly, if we ignore the suffering of another human being, we cannot call ourselves the humans. Mm. That's, that's great. And that's very true. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, they, uh, I want to say something more. Please. They are gathered together in the sky that belong to all the humans. I, uh, did, I imagine this um, painting, all the people together join together and in the sky to belong to all of us, all mm -hmm. the humans. Yeah. No, definitely. It's yeah, even because... better now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. Yeah, no, that was that was fantastic because it is it is true, you know, we you know, the, the world, the land, it is all belongs to us. It's everyone's responsibility to take care of it and to, and to share with each other. Um, I think that's, that's really important. Um, in fact, uh, the Saudi, the, it is a, a very great uh, uh, writer and um, he helped people a uh, long time ago. And um, I love this, uh, I love the, the books and the uh, poets and uh, I want to do something uh, to be the best for, uh, for him. Yeah. <laughs> I introduce all the people. Yeah. No, that's, that's fantastic, this, this, this desire to, to share. Um, that's really important um, because who, who knows who could become inspired now, uh, not only by your artwork, but then to go and do research on, on these poets that have inspired it. Mm -hmm. So uh, next, Nassim, we're going to talk about uh, the piece that you've chosen. Let me just pull it up here. Excellent. Could you please, yeah, please tell us, uh, tell us about this fantastic work of art. Um, sorry, in the picture that I'm seeing, uh, I have the samples of all of our works at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and the bottom of my painting has a roll of 
uh, you know, it completes ah, the rest. Okay. Yeah, 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 so yeah. So if that part could be erased from the screen, that would help a lot. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Excellent. Sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. So uh, we have a pure abstract uh, piece of art in front of us right now. And uh, abstract art, despite its often chaotic uh, and spontaneous appearance, uh, it owns a structure that is composed of elements such as uh, form, shape, line, uh, color, texture, and value. Uh, with this presentation, I'm trying to, I will try to explain a little bit of these elements in this piece of work and how these elements are hands in hand helping each other to uh, make something or bring uh, uh, imagination or what's going on in the artist's minds into the canvas. As I mentioned earlier, uh, these piece belong to those five last pieces about the movement of women life freedom. At some point in this revolution, women uh, took off their uh, headscarves and they burned them as a sign of, you know, uh, stopping the, like putting an end to uh, this, uh, uh, violence or violence acts or uh, forcing them to wear and cover themselves the way that they were not uh, comfortable with or didn't like it. And uh, many peoples were actually died. They, 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 you know, they went to prison and they died because of, you know, uh, saying these kind of things and going to the streets and uh, because of that, you know, they paid the price, they risked their lives. So uh, in this work, uh, the fabric is representing the scarf. And uh, if you look at it from closer, you will see that the uh, top part of this fabric is burnt even. So what I did, I, I did actually had the fabric in my hand and I put it on the fire. And I saw that what happened to the fabric and I was trying to, now put it on the canvas and relate it to the rest of the colors. So um, I would like to analyze this piece with the shapes first. I have it in a piece of paper, as you can see. We see a rectangular shape, the top where the flames are or the wrinkles are accumulating at the top. It fits into a triangle. At the bottom, you have a horizontal rectangle, which is uh, holding the whole building or hold the middle part of this uh, uh, piece into it. So uh, the colors blue and orange, they are representing the uh, emotions they have uh, a lot of emotional weight to them. They are complementary colors, which means they contrast with each other more than any other colors. When they are beside each other, they look even brighter. Orange represents uh, like, you know, energy and uh, it's uh, beside blue, as I said, it just uh, makes it brighter. The contrast is uh, something that you cannot deny when you look at it. Uh, I was looking for the contrast. I was looking for uh, some tools to show the anger, to show the rage. And uh, so I put these two colors beside each other. I have blue and orange here. And in the middle, you have the off-white color, or if you say, simply white, which uh, represents uh, the purity and innocence and clarification. So 
uh, I would like to say that, you know, this, uh, the bottom part, the orange part at the bottom of this uh, piece represents the anger, the, the rage that it's there. But uh, through the lines, through the wrinkles in the fabric, this anger and uh, rage is coming up to the surface. It's like a eruption of volcano and it's just coming to the surface. You see the lines are, the wrinkles are vertical uh, going upward and it's accumulating at the top. And finally, it's going to the surface, it's coming out as the sparkles and lines. The lines are, uh, will lead your eyes through the composition. What are the lines are the, uh, basically the wrinkles on the fabric, the lines at the top with the brush strokes, everywhere at the top and even at the bottom you see the oranges are coming to like um, little lines and flames so these lines will lead your eyes through this composition take you everywhere we have shape and we have the uh, form well shape is the flat but the form is something that has dimension is 3d and it has a 3d aspect so the fabric makes it uh, more dimensional and it gives you a 3D kind of aspect. But the texture of the fabric, when you touch it, it's not leathery or it's not silky, but it's perky, it's rough and it's hard. And it suits the subject that I'm choosing here, which is again, a protest, uh, a revolution. So, uh, these are the things that I want to say. And about the shapes, uh, you have the rectangle at the bottom, which is talking about a stability. But at the top, if you feel the top part of the fabric in a triangle, triangle is movement. And uh, especially when it's pointing up, it has uh, the strongest compositional uh, shape it, it will turn to. So, uh, this triangle at the top is also a delta or a symbol in ancient Greek, which uh, again was representing of the movement. And uh, I hope that with this uh, you know, explanation, you have a better understanding of how the elements of arts can help each other to, uh, uh, you know, somehow show the mind and what's going in the mind of the artist and how the artist is trying to talk to the viewer. And when I have this piece uh, in the gallery, many of the viewers came and talked to me and it was very um, fascinating for me because um, I thought this is a kind of very pure abstract and many people find it challenging to uh, have connection to these kind of works. But to my surprise, many people come to me and say, wow, this work is talking to us. This work is saying a lot to us. We can't take our eyes off this work. What is it saying? What is it representing? It doesn't matter if it's they feel exactly what I had in mind because uh, this is not a poster for advertising. This is a piece of art. It even I shouldn't say anything about the, you know, the inspiration that I had uh, behind this, but it's about the relation that you make with this piece of art. So when you as a viewer are looking at a piece of work, what makes you feel? How do you feel when you look at it? Does it speak to you? Do you want to see it again? Do you want to come to it and look at it for? you know, more than one or two minutes. So this is all about art. And, uh, but the inspiration, as I mentioned, behind this was the movement. And I hope that I had a, some clarification and some answers for the questions that the viewers had. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, uh, Nazim. And going into 
uh, like the elements of design. I think that's really important because viewers um, maybe don't have uh, a background um, in uh, a more formal arts education um, might not make those connections, you know, and, and realize how you are using things like shapes and complementary colors and, and form and space and all of that to tell your story. Um, I really appreciate you uh, going so in depth. Like, that's great. Yeah. And just the, the texture on this is absolutely fantastic. You, the way you've been able to capture uh, the folds uh, and keep them there, you know, so they don't get too stiff or they don't get flat, I think really uh, is really evocative, right? Because the more it looks like draping, the more you can sort of envision it being uh, draped on a human or or some kind of figure, you know, and, and makes that connection with the viewer uh, strong if, if, if they want to see that in it. Yeah, people have people have said different things to me when they look at this piece. They say their own interpretation of the work and, you know, uh, but one thing is obvious, it catches your eyes. And these are, this is because of the using those elements that I just mentioned, the contrast mm -hmm. and the using, uh, you know, the proportions, even the proportions and measurements, uh, like uh, we have, uh, when you are, you're making a composition in a piece of art, you have positive and negative spaces. The main subjects will be the positive space and the rest will be the negative. For example, if you are drawing a pen or a book on a table in a room, that table with the book is the positive space and the wall and floor will be the negative. So the proportions are important. Whether you make the, that positive space bigger than the negative, it says it sends one message. And if you make it smaller, sends another message. So how this rectangle shape in the middle of this blue sky is representing itself, the size of it, how big it is compared to the negative space is also, you know, making a dominant kind of, you know, message and, um, there are lots of things that it should be hand in hand in order for a work to become successful, to become a uh, whole. And, uh, and if you don't uh, follow those rules and if you don't know them, it might happen by accident, yes. But uh, sometimes those accidents are something that it's uh, within you. Like I have the knowledge, I don't calculate them when I want to put them on the canvas. It just comes out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it has happened to me before that I have done some works. I use some of the colors, textures, and then I wipe them away and put another, another, another. Mm -hmm. At the end, the work which is done is something that is coming from my mind, my soul, my experience of life. So uh, definitely, as I mentioned earlier, we are reflection of the world. We are the reflection of the, our work is reflection of our mm -hmm. experience in life. So the colors that I'm choosing, the fabric I'm choosing, texture, everything, all these elements that I mentioned are uh, making the piece of art, which is original and it's coming absolutely from mind with no, uh, you know, uh, making it like duplicate. Like, you know, even if I wanted to make another thing like this, I cannot copy this work. I would not be able. And uh, so this is something very interesting about the abstract work. I just wanted to give this uh, information because I know that, you know, um, it's difficult, it's challenging for many people to make connection. And they ask me, so what is it? So what is it about? What does it mean? Um, it doesn't mean anything and it means everything. So yeah. it's just about, it's just about the relation that you have with the piece of work, your connection. Uh, I hope I gave enough information about this. 
Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. No. And and you're right. That's that's what the point of all artwork is. Right. Is is to make that connection to to exactly. the viewer to figure out uh, what the story is for them. Yeah. Well, because uh, naturally we are looking for something that is realistic that we can identify. And, uh, you know, when you cannot identify with the things, with your surroundings, with the subjects around you, with the real world that it's around you, you cannot understand it. And you become clueless of what is this piece of art talking about. But everything has a meaning. Everything, every form, every line, every, you know, texture, every color, it says something. Like... Uh, Earlier, James was saying that I don't have the education about, uh, you know, art, but uh, I would say, James, that with your work, I can say what kind of person you are. Mm -hmm. I can I can tell your personality with the colors you choose, with the forms that you are bringing into the canvas. So this is how art is connecting, but it has a language, you know, and it's like alphabet. When you know the alphabet, you can write something. You are doing it by your heart. And this is beautiful. And But we are enjoying it. We are enjoying your work because we understand that vocabulary. And uh, this is how the art works. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. Thank you. Uh, and that's a great segue uh, to move in to talk about, uh, James, about your work. Um, yeah. Like you said at the beginning, there's a lot of uh, commonalities between the three of us uh, with uh, connection. And uh, one where you said, um, uh, what was the word? Um, your abstract came from within. Um I think a lot of mine probably comes from within as well. And I always try to bring out connection and you'll see that when we go to the painting there. Um, <clears throat> most of my paintings have what they call spirit lines and those spirit lines, they, they show connection. So that's a common thread in Woodlands style art as I'm learning uh, connections. Uh, in this, this is one of my earlier paintings I think I was just kind of playing with this, uh, just putting paint down, and then it just kind of developed into, into what it is. But um, in this, it's called the Bird Council of Color. And uh, you can see all the different colors I have there. Uh, like you were saying earlier, I like to use colors that contrast. Um, it just was a natural kind of thing. I found different things contrasted really well. And in this one, you see the yellow and the green. And um, what you see, well, I guess the connection uh, component in this is the leaves. If you look at the leaves, uh, some are a little bit light green, some are a little darker green, and they all have a different, mm, let's call it a symbol, a different, uh, kind of lines on each one. Each one is its own individual self, but yet it's it's connected to the one plant, the one tree. Uh, and yet uh, it's different. So I, I like to say uh, the same, but different. We're all the same, but different. We're individuals that are all connected. And, and that is a planetary thing, like we discussed in the first painting. Um, there's people all around the world and we're all connected. We all have, um, I don't know, for lack of a better word, maybe a spiritual connection to whatever degree. I, I can't define that. But what I do relate to is if one of us is hurting, we're all hurting to a certain degree. And uh, so that's a truth that I think is shared around the world. It might not be observed by all people around the world, but it's definitely a truth. Uh, around the world. So here I was trying to show again an individuality and yet a commonality with the birds. Uh, some of the birds look different. They have a different shape to them. Uh, they definitely have a different 
a marking, like a color that uh, is inside them. And then again, different lines. There's lines throughout them. And they're all individuals. And yet they're all birds. So part of where, how I grew up, apart from my culture, I didn't get a few different things that, that natives that had a connection to their cultural um, identity directly. Now I'll try to make sense of that by uh, showing or suggesting how the, this country was divided and the people were systematically dismantled. Um, as we, we know, we've heard of residential schools, heard of 60 Scoop. There was a removal and there was an attempt to sever ties. A lot of people that went to a residential school uh, came back embarrassed to be native, uh, to be um, a Cree speaker. In, in my case, our language was Cree and uh, Anishinaabe. Um, they came home embarrassed to speak it. They wouldn't speak it. They wouldn't even try to identify as being native. So you can see that cultural loss immediate to the next, to their kids. So I'm going to have to deal with this cat. So give me a second. Yeah. The wonder she the hears me start talking, streaming. she wants to come and talk too. So, <laughs> what she does. so anyways, back to the, uh, uh, the separations that, uh, has happened here in Canada and the US, Mexico, Central America. There, uh, there was a, an attempt to separate, to eliminate what they said, call, uh, kill the Indian in the child. And I gotta say they were, they were really successful uh, in doing so. There was a lot of uh, lost souls and uh, we see that effect, like we've all seen that effect of people on the streets and stuff. They didn't just end up there. There was, there was a, a systematic movement of uh, annihilation, for a better word, of culture, identity, and language. And uh, it had a great effect. So I come along in this. And, and I didn't even know I was a 60 scoop. So my, my story is a little bit intricate. I don't know how far I should get into it talking about my painting, but it is relevant. I was lucky enough that when I was born, I had a, a mushroom that did give me a, a native or an indigenous name. Uh, it's, a, it's a privilege and an honor to have one and to give one. And I was lucky enough that it, it stuck this far that I know that my name was given was Blue Sky. But when I met my mother, I think she was or I was about 25, I was in my mid to late 20s when I first met her um, consciously. Uh, he, she said, uh, you know, you have a native name. And I said, uh, yeah, it's, it's Blue Sky, I knew this. And she was amazed and she says, but that wasn't all of it. There was more to your name than Blue Sky. There was Blue Sky, something, something. And, but she had, couldn't remember it either. Uh, it had been, you know, 25 years or so. So that part of me is missing in the wind. Something else that I didn't get was um, my colors. Um, natives, when they uh, dance, when they go to powwows, when they adorn their clothes, they'll have certain colors that they tend towards more often than not. And a lot of times these colors are given in a ceremony of some sort. And it's kind of like a rite of passage. Uh, well, I didn't, I didn't get that either, but what I was doing with this painting was, uh, showing that there's all these different birds that had their colors and they assembled that day for that one bird. You'll see him, uh, as I'm looking at the painting on the left side, halfway up on a branch by himself. And he's looking up at the sun. That bird doesn't have any colors. And what I found when I started painting and, and sharing, I found out that I wasn't alone. This wasn't uh, an anomaly. I wasn't a one-off. 
in this. There were a lot of people that had been mm, hiding, uh, were ashamed, uh, were trying, as it were, to regain uh, a cultural connection. And, and they seemed to be a little more brave to come out of the, the shadows, as myself included. Um, and we were trying to identify ourselves with their culture and, and identity. And there was a lot of us that didn't have our colors, a lot of us that didn't have names, a lot of us that didn't know a, a word of our, uh, of our language. And uh, so as a result, I, I came up with this idea to show myself. I, I never got my colors, but luckily there was just this uh, connection that I had with a few different colors that I used or found myself using quite a bit because they, they kind of vibrated with each other. And I just liked how it was when I put them together and the contrast that they gave and your eyes were kind of fighting. It's going, what's going on? There seems to be like a little bit of vibration. There's life. It's alive. So in this uh, picture, you see the bird. He's looking up at the sun. And in the sun, you'll see a little bird flying in. And in the tail, there's three colors. And it's like they came together that day and they decided what that bird's colors would be. I remember sharing this uh, painting with the lady. She came over and uh, as I was telling her the story about it, she began to weep. And it was because that was her story too. Uh, what I found was there was a lot of us that had the same kind of story, uh, trying to get back something that was almost completely lost. So it's, it's definitely a journey. Um, but luckily, we're not alone. And this is, this is something that I appreciate quite a bit, that there is a, a lot of other people. I thought I was alone. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, I didn't fit in the Native world and I didn't fit in the white world. And I felt like I was ostracized. I was out by myself. But more recently, like I said, there are quite a few people that are trying to learn, trying to get their way back home uh, to their identity and, and uh, just pride of being who you are. Um, so it's, it's a marvelous thing. Uh, it's a, uh, a journey I'm enjoying quite a bit. I guess if we go to that other um, painting now, we'll see kind of like a result to this. I painted this one and then right after I painted this one. Uh, this one directly reflects the other, because what we have here is that bird that was sitting on that branch reveals himself at his first powwow. And he goes to the powwow wearing the three colors that was given to him that day on his cheek and in his feathers. So it turns out he's from the Eagle Clan. See, I got a little creative because even in my band, they don't know their clans anymore. Like it, it's all been taken away uh, through the residential schools and stuff. And uh, they don't know clans, uh, what their clans might have been. And all those clans, they had a, it's kind of like almost like a political party, not so much political as it was uh, purpose. Uh, some clans were um, given different duties to serve the whole. Uh, but again, that was, that was lost. And I just thought to myself, the band I come from is called Kakawishtahau. That means an eagle flying in a circle or soaring in a circle above. And I thought to myself, yeah, maybe that might have been my name. Uh, Blue Sky Kakawishtahau. So I came up with the eagle scenario and the bird revealed himself as an eagle. And then uh, he's got his colors on. And in the center, you'll see uh, kind of like a little profile of a native man with, with a bit of a, a beard. So I always, uh, I had fun with that. I thought, yeah, that's, that's me, my persona uh, in this bird um, with the colors. And uh, so often you see a man with a bird uh, tattoo and now we have a bird with a man tattoo. So I, I kind of like to play with it a little bit. Uh, the colors around the outside are depict the, uh, the colors of the, the medicine wheel. Uh, and they have different values uh, in direction, in time, in spiritual um, things, I guess. So the two tie together. And I guess that's, that's kind of my point 
with my painting, a lot of the times there's a story and uh, it starts to mean a little bit more when you hear the story. And, and that's what I found from the other previous uh, artists as well. Uh, I liked their painting even more when I heard the story because I was going, wow, that's, that's cool. I like what's going on there. Uh, and, and I could relate somehow. I think we can all relate to our different stories, even though they're different. We're still the same. We still have these same struggles, uh, but we can still pull together. And I think that's what we're doing even now uh, through through our totally different style of arts. But there's still a, a common thread. And I guess that's the connections that we're making. So, yeah, that's where it is. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks so much uh, for sharing that, James. And I think I think you're right um, in all of the artwork uh, that we've seen tonight and heard you all talk about uh, connection is, I think, the connection. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the, the things that you're you're all talking about are things about uh, people um, coming together. Maybe they've they've been divided, um, but now is the time for them to to make that connection with each other. And that's something that I think we can all recognize and hope for and strive for and seeing examples of that in artwork like this, uh, as you've all said, is pretty inspiring, whether it's uh, something that's going to bring you together to uh, join a fight or bring you together uh, in in peaceful contemplation or just bring you together in in joy and knowing that you're not alone uh, mm. is is pretty is pretty powerful stuff. Yeah. Awesome. So I really you. enjoyed uh, the explanation mm -hmm. about your first piece of art that you showed us, James. Mm -hmm. um, it was very interesting for me. Uh, just one point I made uh, when I was looking at it, when you were explaining about the bird with no color on it, yeah. uh, which was representing you. You know, um, if you look again, uh, you have uh, you've got plenty of birds on that tree, but the one that is representing you is not necessarily the smallest one. And this mm -hmm. is the very nice thing that I noticed. Mm -hmm. So you might not have the color on that branch, sitting there on that branch, but you're almost as the biggest bird on that, you know, picture, which is representing your big heart. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's the beauty of it. Although there is no color, but you have the, the heart and, you know, those... Mm -hmm. That size of bird is saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's good Thank you for sharing it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah. Your work and Nassim too. I enjoy for both of you. Yeah. Thank you. The color and the shape, everything. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. And I want to uh, add something about the, my painting and the uh, Sadi. Um, I want to say he was, uh, Sadi was the famous person during uh, his lifetime. And his works uh, have been translated into many language. Many poets and writers and painters have been influenced by him. And I always wanted to create an image that would encourage people, both those, both those who know him and those who don't to read his works, I hope to give them a better understanding of his great works. In fact, uh, poetry is uh, like a painting and painting is uh, similar to poetry. They reflect each other and change their work and name with one another. We say that the painting is a silent and the poetry is a expressive. Uh, poets compose what is uh, pleasing to the ear and the painters uh, depict what appears beautiful. And uh, in my um, uh, painter, the Sadi painter uh, painting, uh, you can see each of the character is taught to be in their own thoughts and imagination, but you can see to unity in the depth 
depth of the whole painting, just, uh, just like all people in the world. I want to add this and we must leave soon because I have a class and thank you, Stephen and Nassim and James. Yeah, well, thank you. Very good. Uh, thank thank you. you. All of you for sharing your fantastic artwork in this exhibition and for this conversation uh, and sharing uh, where you're coming from as an artist um, and kind of what you're hoping uh, to impart upon viewers and what you're hoping that they'll uh, make up for themselves. Uh, it's it's pretty wonderful. Uh, it's It's great to see how you all bring reference points um, from your uh, uh, from your, your cultures, your heritage, the, the things that you uh, hold dear um, and, and share them um, with thousands of people who might not share those same reference points, um, but you're sharing, as we've said, these, these stories or ideas or emotions that everyone can connect with. I think that's, mm -hmm. as you've all said, that's the power of artwork, right, is to make connections. Yeah. So I hope that uh, everyone watching uh, has made uh, a connection with our three talented artists and with the artwork and we'll hopefully go see uh, this art exhibit while it's up on display. Uh, Chronicle Stories and Symbols of Culture and Connection is on display at the K-Meek Arts Center uh, until May 21st. Uh, so please go check it out and see all this fantastic work with your own eyes. Uh, and if you want to learn more about our three amazing artists, uh, you can find in the description of this video uh, links where you can follow them uh, and see what they're up to and see what new work they're doing. So thank you, James Greening, Nazim Modamedi, and Saida Zamorari for your thank beautiful you. artwork and for your fantastic conversation. And thank, thank you, you to Stephen. Amy you Art you. Center. Uh, thank you. Totally. <laughs> Could I mention real quick? Yes. I, I, just because we have a an uh, opportunity, yeah. I am doing an artist talk on the twenty seventh of this month. Um, right. At Pomo Art Gallery. Sorry. Just uh, it has three more of the big orange paintings that are at K Meeks. There's three more that are there, and I'll be doing an artist talk on the twenty seventh. That's Thursday at Pomo. So that's just uh, another place. Maybe you can come out and see us and yeah, I can share a little Sorry, more. what time, James? I think it's six o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Homo. Great. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for sharing it. Thank you. Totally. And thank you, uh, everyone who is watching this live and everyone who's going to uh, watch it in the future. Uh, so again, thank you to our fantastic artists on uh, and I hope that uh, everyone watching uh, goes and sees the show and follows uh, them in their amazing uh, art journeys uh, on the rest of uh, rest of their career. So thanks for joining us and take care. Thank you. Have a nice evening. See you. Bye.